Hi, I'm George Cow, and today I'm with Sandy Freshy, and we have a very interesting topic uh, today. We're going to be talking about how do we play this limited game in in this physical world while we are infinite beings of spirit. Um, anyway, this is going to be a great conversation. Sandy, thank you so much for doing this. Well, thank you, George, for having me on. Yeah. So um, let me just share your bio so those who don't know you can get to know your background a little bit. Um, so Sandy Freshy helps healers and transformational leaders activate their highest potential so that they can do their work with less strife, more confidence, and a greater sense of purpose. She helps them to see in detail who they are, why they're here, and how they can leverage their energy to shine brightly and fulfill their purpose in the most awesome way. Sandy works with the esoteric and highly logical system called human design. Some of you probably have heard of this or even have gotten your human design uh, chart done. Um, Sandy also works with intuitive processes to access soul level information. She truly enjoys interpreting energy and activating her clients to live as a fully empowered soul having a human experience. So that's what we want to get into today. <clears throat> now you talk about this idea of us being infinite beings playing a game of limitation. Um, tell us more about this. Like how, like what's your perspective on this? Well, um, I, this is kind of inspired by our times right now where a lot of us are sheltering in place and we're having to kind of find our fulfillment and our way in our life through uh, limitation. And, and I'm seeing it a lot with, uh, with my clients and, and of course in my own personal life as well, that this, this sense of limitation is creating um, more of an opportunity for increased resilience, for um, more creativity, and then that pours over into our relationships, or at least in my experience and what I've seen into relationships, into business, into work, all of that. And um, the thought that came to mind as I was preparing to get on is that that um, quote or that saying, necessity is the mother of invention. We have um, at our access um, as soul beings, you know, the, the aspect of us where only that is so infinite and so far reaching um, has a, a long history through eons. And, um, and this, this huge being, which is a very limited way to ex explain us as souls, has to kind of fit into this little body or it, what it, it can of itself of its consciousness into this little body for this experience so there must be a reason for that and the reason i feel is that this experience that we have in our human lives on this planet um, in this 3d physical world that we have must have the the value of it is the limitation that we have here so, um, you know, so, but a lot of times what happens is we forget that we have all of this out here <laughs> at our access and even more. Um, and we're living from that place of limitation, not knowing that we're really meant to flow this infinite sense of ourselves through this uh, filter of limitation. Yeah. Yeah, totally. I, I love that. Um, so it's this remembrance of the fact that we have infinite resources, uh, at least spiritually speaking, um, and and yet the limitations that we have don't have to be, it doesn't have to be seen as a prison. Um, it doesn't have to be seen as, uh, you know, woe is me, look, I have these limits in my life, not just as a human being, but all of us have different kinds of limits in our life right now but that they can be seen as a, a gift to, you know, kind of become, uh, just experience something, uh, you know, you know, greater wisdom through, through these experiences, et cetera. So one of the things that, um, that you uh, help your clients with, I mean, you, one of your, one of the things you're known for is the, the human design system, right? How does that, how does that relate to what we're talking about here? That is the aspect of 
this perspective that I'm developing around the soul and, you know, the, the inf infinite aspect of us and how we live it. This is the, the limitation aspect. And, you know, I've encountered people in the spiritual world who are really tapped into that, their soul consciousness, their sense of infinity, and they kind of poo-poo the, the whole um, human design thing, you know, this is kind of like the whole thing where you get your body graph and it sort of is, it dials you into space and time. It dials your coordinates into your life right now. And they, they criticize it as being a system of limitation. And I totally agree that it is a system of limitation, but it's a system of understanding kind of what roads and, and um, uh, energies and themes you really have access to in this life that you can make the most of through by bringing through some of this broader essence of yourself. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like if you were to go play a game, you know, with a bunch of friends. And then, you know, the game, maybe the purpose of the game is to have fun, right? Maybe the purpose of the game for some people is to like win some points or whatever. And then you're like, well, the game's rules are a limitation. So <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to just, you know, play whatever I want, you know, however, with whatever rules I want. But, but, but that, that's not the game we're playing here. It's like the game we're playing. And I, I would say, you know, the points we're winning in this game is maybe soul growth or, you know, greater, greater love or, or greater courage or something like something along those lines, uh, maybe more experience in, in ways that we couldn't have in, in the, um, uh, in the greater soul world or whatever. So it's like, it's like, it is useful to know the rules of the game. <laughs> you know, it's, it okay. is useful to, to play within the constraints of the game so that you can use those constraints for the purpose of which they were designed. Right. So, yeah. Uh, so yeah, keep going on this. I, I actually hadn't seen that chart that you just showed us. A oh ago. yeah. This is, this is the mandala from which the, um, the body graph that you would get on your human design chart is calculated. So it has all of the, um, the I Ching hexagrams on it that make the gates and the channels. And, you know, it has the uh, astrological uh, calculations on it that are in line with the seasons and all of that. So um, it, it just reminds me of a dial, like being dialed in. <laughs> Yeah, I like that. To a certain yeah. game. Yeah. yeah. And, but what, you know, the reason that I, I've been um, really putting, bringing this concept of the, the unlimited soul back into, into my game, into how I work with, with people is that um, a lot of times people get their human design chart and they, you know, and there are certain rules with rules, suggestions, I guess, of how you can begin to experiment with it. And they come up against this um, wall where they really do feel restrained and limited. Because it doesn't necessarily, it does kind of tell the whole story, but, but it doesn't necessarily tell you what you have access to that you can't see in terms of consciousness, in terms of other supportive energies and, and whatever that's in that metaphysical unseen realm. Um, so people a lot of times come to me when they, they, they're feeling this um, limitation that, that feels like it's imposed upon them. And they don't know what to do with that because they know deep down inside there's more to them than um, what they're understanding about their design. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. So then um, the, the, tell us about this. What, 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 are, what is the gift? What is the benefit, I guess, of playing within the rules of the game? Um, and just to just so that people have some orientation around this um, human design. I'm going to butcher this. So you can have to come jump in on this, but, <laughs> but, but basically there are like, for those who watching this, who haven't gotten a human design chart, right? Like, like it's based on your birthday. So there's some pin underpinnings from astro astrology, mm -hmm. but then there's also, uh, it also, there's also an integration of the I Ching, right? Um, and, and other things, but you, uh, like once you get your chart, you, um, realize that, okay, there are different types of people. Um, I am this type and with this type, there are certain things I have to be aware of, um, things that are where I'm stronger, things where I might need to have a different strategy than other people. Right. So, 
um, yeah, kind of start telling, sharing with us about what those strategies are, what the limitations or the gifts are, I guess. Of, of yeah. Um, well, let's, let's say, you know, and it, it, it's a, a framework, I guess, of, um, in general, I mean, at the very surface level, I mean, when you start to dive deep, you really kind of understand what about you is infinite. But at the very surface level, there it's uh, people are by their birth dates and, and these underpinnings of the themes that they have. And um, there's a, an aspect about how your chakras work and all of that in there as well. Um, it, it explains how your body is really designed to function your body mind complex i guess are designed to function um so that you can have more ease in your life so that you can just surrender and enjoy this journey in this game um and it's there are kind five of like if i could jump in on this yeah. on this idea of using our limitations it's kind of like if if you don't realize the limitations you'll you'll just keep like you're, you're, you're running, like you're driving, let's use this idea of driving like on a, on a, um, what do you call those bumper cars, right? Mm -hmm. Like if you, if you don't realize that there are the sides, you just keep ramming your, your bumper car mm -hmm. against the sides instead of just, you know, having fun going along the pathway or whatever it is. Yeah, having having fun going along the pathway, uh, you know, seeing what you need to see, receiving what you need to receive, or, right. you know, in just enjoying the 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 whole journey so to speak um and well and in on the surface level of human design there are five different energy types and each type has a certain strategy which is kind of like um looking you know at the first glance it looks like a limitation it is kind of a limitation your our bodies are limited in our capacity to process energy in um you know our some of us have different uh physical strengths and, and attributes in the, w in the way that we're really uh, designed to use our energy, um, which points to like uh, some of the broader strokes of life purpose and all of that. Um, but at first glance or even, even just uh, feeling into it and, and beginning to understand how this body mind part of us works, um, there can be a, a limitation with the strategy of how you use your um how you how you manage your energy or how you leverage it so um you know most people ha depending de you know most people except for one of the energy types has some sort of a strategy to wait and uh and of course there's there are all kinds of details and nuances for understanding what that means in your body but it's really uh, kind of pointing to this sense that uh, we don't have to necessarily do all the things that we think we need to do or that other people say that we need to do in order to enjoy our ride, in order to um, go down that road that, that we've sort of laid out in, in this whole uh, lifetime of um, themes that can be understood through that human design chart. Um, so it's um very much but but what happens with people is they they sometimes get this friction inside of themselves around well you know um if i just sit around and wait which is not necessarily what you're doing while you're waiting but if i just sit around and wait um you know then my dishes aren't going to get done and, and how am i going to make money and and all of this other stuff and that's where people get disempowered and they don't want to drive their car anymore down the road. <laughs> they want so, to drive it off here. Yeah. Or just stop. Yeah. And what you just said about waiting. Now, some people watching this might not understand what that means. Um, maybe uh, you could share one of the strategies for, I know um, the, a majority of the population uh, is a certain type, actually. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right? Um, yes. And, and that type, of course, has a certain strategy. So maybe you could share, yeah, share with us what that is. Yes. Um, the majority of the population are actually um, either generator or manifesting generator type. And they're, they're similar. They're, there's some nuances. But these are the people who really get satisfaction from, um, they're, they're really here to get satisfaction from their work. And, uh, and they're here to attract 
life and people to them and respond through their um, through their gut response to those things that are really healthy for them and and move them along their track. Uh, but they they are designed to um, wait for those things to come to them rather than to jump off and um, go and, and start something out of the blue because it seemed like a good idea. You know, if they just wait and they relax, it'll come to them. But a lot of times that can be seen as a limitation. And it is kind of a limitation. It's kind of the limitation to keep you on your road. <laughs> so you find the satisfying work. <laughs> right, right. Okay, so, so this is really important because if people aren't, um, who are that particular type, aren't waiting or, or are, so, so let's talk about it. So what does that mean to wait? It means that um, you're waiting for a specific kind of a, a cue and a resonance within your body. Remember, this is a body-mind system. Okay. So, and, and most of us are trained to kind of take actions from our mind. Like, you know, we're, we think it's a good idea, so let's get it started and make it happen. And most of us don't really have um, the body-mind construct, the, the energy within us to actually keep that going if, if we can get it started. We need other people, we need whatever, the opportunities or whatever. And with this, these particular types, it's, um, it's very much about just following that body gut response and paying attention to what they're attracting and, and really honoring that feeling within them that usually comes out of their mouth as, as some kind of a guttural tone, like uh-huh, uh-uh, and going in that direction when it shows up rather than uh, taking the path or the road that leads to the good idea where there's really nothing there for them to work with. Mm, wow. That's, so um, you just said a couple of things about what might be showing up, right? And, and the, the, you said about the guttural utterance. I mean, these are things that, um, that you're so trained in noticing, but a lot of people don't. So maybe you can, can you think of a specific example, whether, you know, maybe in a client's life or in someone, someone's life who is a generator, a manifesting generator, how, how that waiting and responding, what that looks like. Hmm. Or, or, or maybe there is a, there's an example you can kind of make up. So you, you said earlier, for example, that, um, that the, the, the weight, the, the, the signals, right. To respond mm -hmm. isn't, um, could be like you said, other people could be, mm -hmm. uh, what, what else could it be? It's real tangible stuff. It could be a suggestion. It could be reading a billboard, you know, um, and I'll, I'll tell you, uh, I'll tell you a specific example of, of someone that I read for, uh, read her chart for and she was creating a course um, and she was uh, you know she had tried creating courses before you know and just kind of creating them for her, from her mind without really the the audience there or whatever and then after she had her reading and she's one of these energy the generator I can't remember if she's generator or manifesting generator but anyway she realized that there were people around her who really wanted to learn a specific thing that she had to teach so she sort of responded to that you know and then they most of them were probably the same type they responded back and it became this this collaboration of energy exchange that moved her forward into that opportunity now as she was doing that she got caught up in um, thinking about, oh, I should make a, a workbook to go with this and all of this other stuff. And she caught herself. She said, nobody's asking for this. I don't need to do this right now. Eventually, I think they did. But, <laughs> but she's like, she, she realized that's where she wasted her energy and got off the track instead of following this path where it it's, was seemingly limited but really it was all there for her. Mm, yeah, that's, that's a great example. Um, and the, the danger of like 
not following the strategy that's meant for us is um, maybe you could share some of the signals of when we are bumping up against, you know, the, the well, limitations. Yeah, well, this, that's, you know. The manifesting generator and the generator energy types will feel frustration all the okay. time. You know, ah. uh, they'll feel frustrated. Now, some of the other energy types, like the projector energy type, it, it's a kind of a deeper thing. Like a, it feels like bitterness. Like um, when you put out a lot of work and nobody really recognizes you for it, or steals your <laughs> steals your ideas or whatever, and it can it can be really um, almost like a bitter taste in your mouth when that happens if you're if you're a projector type manifestors who are really the only ones who are designed to initiate action they, they still have to kind of wait for the right timing and know what that is all they have to do is just inform people about what they're going to do and just go about their business um they can come up against a lot of anger and then there's a really rare energy type that is kind of here to take in, they're known as reflectors. They take in the whole world. They take in, they can take in the whole environment and they sort of can, they reflect back what's going on in, in their environment or in the world. Um, and they can uh, really feel disappointed when they're, um, not in the right place with the right people, uh, feeling pushed to make decisions because they need a lot of time. So, you know, every, every type has, it's called a not self theme. When you know you're not being yourself, when you know you're not in the, in the program, <laughs> you know, turned in the program in the right way. So say, say more about, um, the not self theme for the, for the, majority of the population. So for, for, for generators, yeah. what, what is that? You used to mention frustration, but say more about that. Well, let's see. It, it can come from the, it, it can be internal frustration. Like if, if you've jumped at a job opportunity and uh, before you, or you ignored your gut response and you went into a job opportunity that really was not good for you, that really wasn't fulfilling, you'll come up against frustration. Um, generators, that, that particular part of those two types, um, will naturally sometimes come up against frustration when they're just about ready to make another leap in mastery, you know, another, so they kind of need to sort of sit back and wait to see what comes to them next to respond to because that, fr that frustration can sometimes push them into something that's not um, the ideal for them. Uh, and it can also come from other people getting frustrated at them for maybe jumping ahead or uh, not in not well manifesting generators, you know, kind of they, they, their energy moves kind of fast so they can like skip three steps and forget to tell the people that are behind them that are counting on them to <laughs> tell yeah. them what's going on yeah. to uh, and they'll and then they're the, the people that they needed to kind of let know where they were going will, will get frustrated. Mm -hmm. Wow. So there's a lot here and um, you've been studying and studying the, the system for years and also training people on it, coaching a lot of people on this. You've done obviously many, many reading uh, chart readings and things. Um, you have an introductory session um, kind of offer uh, that's that you're doing right now. Do you want to tell us about that? Well, this offer actually um, integrate. It's not a human design reading per se, but there are a lot of people who are are asking now um, or feeling right now that this is their time. This is their time to spring forth with their gifts to really um, come forth and be of service. And, um, you know, whether or not you know your human design chart, there's another aspect that I bring in with this reading where I look at use your human design chart. And I also look at some of the energies of your soul characteristics. And we talk about how uh, you can use, uh, bring both of those together, like live this broader aspect of you um, in within your human design um, so that you can really be confident and, and really um, take some practical uh, steps forward, uh, knowing who you are, why you're here, um, and then, you know, and doing it and really feeling empowered 
uh, and fulfilled and um, knowing what what you can do in the immediate future about um, you know your ideas and how that filters through you know what what is that as in terms of your soul expression your um, and how you manage and leverage your energy in your human expression to bring that through for more prosperity for more flow in your life and for those who are wanting to start a business for more flow in beginning that those steps into being of service in that framework of business mm, that's great and what's the price of this introductory session well, right now, um, probably for about the next month, I'm, I'm just doing it by uh, um, sliding scale. Mm. And, yeah, then, um, and then probably there will be an affordable price tag. It's, it's a 50 minute kind of a thing. Um, I, I kind of introduce you to the concepts of your soul design and your human design. And then we really brainstorm and make sense of, of how this comes together for you so that you have a few nuggets that you can take and you can work with. Um, and I'll, you know, as, as I move through this, because bringing the soul aspect into the human design is, I've done the soul work, which we can talk about another time, but I've done that for a number of years and I, I put it on the back burner when I started doing the human design work. And it, this is actually feeling like my time to bring the two together to be of greater service to other people. So I know people are struggling. Um, a lot of people have questions about that bigger picture for themselves. So I'm offering it as at a sliding scale right now and, and then we'll figure out the regular price later. Awesome, awesome. Thank you so much for this. And if anyone you know, is resonating, and some of you have already heard of Sandy's work, um, others are being introduced to it, but Sandy is uh, super generous with her content. She has a YouTube channel. Uh, that has a lot of videos on it and of course a Facebook uh, business page as well where um, there she puts you know free content a lot on there um, she has a newsletter she you can check out her website for different courses that she teaches and different kinds of sessions she offers so definitely get in touch with Sandy um, see what what service fits you this introductory session thing looks sounds really interesting actually so um, I'll put the links in the notes in the video, um, but you're just, just uh, for everybody who's just listening and wants to type it in now, what's the website to go to? Sandyfreshy.com. Right. And yeah. it's Sandy with a Y and Freshy is F-R-E-S-C-H-I. So www.sandy, Sandy, S-A-N-D-Y, F-R-E-S-C-H-I, www.sandyfreshy.com. So go and check it out. So thanks so much, Sandy, for the work you do. And um, thank you, George. Thank you. Yeah.